After more than four decades of relatively little immigration into America after its founding, in the 1830s, tens of thousands of immigrants began arriving on her eastern shores, again mainly from Britain, Ireland, and Germany. Some were attracted to the cheap farmland that was made available by westward expansion, while others took advantage of the manufacturing boom in the cities sparked by the Industrial Revolution. The Irish were mainly unskilled laborers who built most of the railroads and canals, took jobs in the emerging textile mill towns in the northeast, or worked in the ports. About half of the Germans became farmers, mainly in the Midwest, and the other half became craftsmen in urban areas. Asian immigrants, mainly from China, began crossing the Pacific to work as laborers, particularly on the Transcontinental Railroad or in the mines. Immigration also during the 19th century was usually male dominated, males in their prime working years between the years of 18 to 25. The Irish being the one exception, eventually there would be more Irish women who immigrated than Irish men. Immigrants to this day often follow established patterns. They leave one village or one city and go to another city in the United States because someone has already established that pattern for them. People go to where they know people. And those people here often can arrange for jobs and employment and places to live and so on. It was often said that your first job when you got off the boat was whoever picked you up at the docks. Now people say your first job is whoever picks you up at the airport. After tripling from the decade before, in just two more decades, from the 1830s to the 1850s, the amount of immigrants arriving in the United States each year tripled again to about 170,000. By the 1850s, when the total population of the country passed 20 million and things began to get a bit crowded, America's first measurable anti-immigrant feelings began to take root, mainly targeting Irish Catholic immigrants who were arriving in large numbers to escape the poverty and death of the potato famine that was hitting them hard at home. But with a huge boom on the horizon, this early xenophobia was nothing compared to what would come later. Thanks for watching part three of our six part series on America's history of immigration. Click on the screen to go back and start watching part one or the next video, part four, or our newest video, or our video on the most amazing accidental scientific discoveries in history.